Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Um, I don't know, it's been probably a year or so ago. One of my viewers down in Florida sent in this uh, radio and donated it to the channel. Um, that basically, you know, do what you want with it. Um, again, it's been so long, uh, I can't quite remember everything we had talked about it or what was wrong with it but this is the Yezu FT 77 amateur HF transceiver and this is a uh, a rig that has no bells and whistles it's uh, upper lower sideband CW and it does have a spot for FM which when I first got this radio and I did a little quick check out on it, there is no FM module inside of it. Now, these radios were made in the very early 80s, around 82, 83. And again, it was a no bells and whistles, about plain Jane as you can get. Uh, it's 100 watt uses a single conversion superheterodyne receiver so it's a you know <laughs> again about as basic as you, as you can get it covers uh, 10 meters to uh, 80 meters and it does cover some of the walk bands has a clarifier control uh, RF attenuator, noise blanker, and it was said years ago that these things had a great noise blanker. AGC control, um, AGF fix, marker and clarifier button so you can push that, use the clarifier. And as you can see you got a uh, mic drive. This is uh, also your drive control. This radio doesn't have available power. But you can do it through the uh, mic gain, especially for CW. So that works out pretty good. Now, if you notice something very interesting on this radio, is the uh, VFO knob. It is a Prego, I guess, spaghetti sauce jar lid. And it comes off, and see someone that's glued a... Uh, a rubber knob behind it and then it just slips over the VFO control but you can see there's a lot of play in it and it uh, doesn't tune that good so what I want to do is just see if this radio even works and then see what we can do about fixing this VFO now normally the way this works, there should be a small rod comes out and that's actually what the VFO knob is connected to. That rod goes in and inside this little mechanism is three little ball bearings that ride in a groove in this knob. And you tighten this up and that sets the uh, tension on that VFO knob. and just the way this is right here you can see there's a lot of play and movement in this so the VFO is not going to uh, work that good with this Prego lead on it um, it's going to be there's no no fine tune so when you turn this it's going to move the uh, display pretty quick so it's going to be kind of hard to really tune in on certain weak stations overall the uh, rig is about in 
cosmetic shape that you'd expect from a rig from uh, 1982. It does have some scratches and some rust on the case here and there. The screws are not rusty. They are plated, so they didn't get rusty. And, uh, you know, the bezel around it is discolored and got nicks and scratches and stuff on it. But if the radio works, that's all that matters. Uh, this will make a great little radio to take out in the field or something, or even for a field day use. Um, you know, it's a lot better to grab a rig like this than it is your brand new $5,000 flex radio or something to carry out for field day. Anyways, basically, all I want to do is just see if the radio works, what's got to be done to it to make it work. Is it going to be cost-worthy to even uh, invest in it if it's not working? And if it is working, then we need to address this uh, VFO knob. Now, you know, I thought one time, okay, I would leave that up there for a uh, conversation piece but it's again it's going to be a little tricky to uh, control the frequency with a knob with no gear reduction in it so I got the rig uh, connected to the power supply and to an outside antenna and we want to press the power button and you can see it Basically comes right on. The uh, AF gain control is very dirty. We have nothing on 20 meters this time of the morning. Let's switch it over to uh, 40 meters. some faint CW in the background. Let's try uh, 10 megahertz. I was listening for WWV but I'm not able to hear it. Um, it's getting late in the morning so it's probably uh, Faded out. Well, the receiver is working. <laughs> no doubt about that. I'm ejecting a signal on 14.200 and with about 5 microvolts that's needed showing about 6 dB ok I got the uh, radio connected to the big power supply I wanted to check the output on this and see exactly what it's doing. See, I got the IF4 set on the frequency, and uh, I put it on 150 watts peak. We on upper side band. We'll keep the radio up. Radio check one two, check one two, and it seems to be real low. I'm going to go to 15 watts peak. Check one two. Check one two. And we're not seeing a whole lot of wattage. About five watts out. So uh, this radio could have some bad finals or something in it. 
We can see a signal come up on our spectrum analyzer. Check one, two. Check one, two. Test radio test. Right, just to make sure it's not a microphone problem, I plug the CW key into it. And we'll put a little on CW. Yep, looks like the same thing. Okay, so the things that we learned just by looking at this the uh, receive sensitivity is down the RF output is down possibly those two are related we're not sure yet we got a bunch of dirty controls and we got a faulty VFO with some missing parts all in all uh, I don't think that's too bad. I believe we have a little something here to work with. Okay, so uh, I got everything disconnected. I'm going to go ahead and crack this radio up. Now, looking at the uh, RF output, we are somewhere in the uh, 6, 7 watt range. So that makes me think that maybe there's nothing wrong with the power amplifier in this rig and the reason I say that because I'm looking in the service manual at the schematic and it shows two different power amplifiers for this rig so looking here at the main schematic you can see right here this is the uh, PA unit and we have a 100 watt unit that's PB2013B and then a 10 watt unit that is PB2149B. So we need to check and see which unit is inside this uh, transceiver. And that may explain why we got such low output. Now looking at specifications like on uh, rig pick, we can see single sideband CW, 100 watts, 85 watts on 10 meters. FM 50 watts. Well, we know we don't have an FM um, module inside this radio. So, we need to crack this thing open and take a look inside. So, I'm going to go ahead and get all the covers off. There's no need of you watching me do that. Uh, just a few screws. And we'll get inside up and take a look. Okay, I got all the covers off. And as you can see, there is... Uh, no FM unit in this radio. It would be a board that would sit right here and there's three plugs here that would plug into it. This is the uh, speaker wire that really needs a connector on it because it's so short it's almost hard to get the uh, cover off so we'll have to worry about that. Now the first thing I see is that the screws on the side for the PA unit are already removed so the only thing that was holding the PA unit on was the cover screws. And this to kind of slide off the back a little bit. Then we can disconnect these wires inside. Pull the power. a little bit hard because it don't open up much further than that so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the screws out of this uh, cover plate so we can look at that circuit board okay until I fully remove this thing it's gonna be kind of hard to see but this is the 100 watt unit I'm not able to see the uh, number on the circuit board yet but by looking in here I removed some of the uh, heatsink compound off of this transistor right here and that is a 2SC2290 and there's another one right over here on this side so that tells me that it is the 100 watt RF unit but one of the first things that I see that the capacitor right here this is a silver dip mica and one side has been disconnected 
So, yep, something is going on inside that uh, RF unit. So, we're going to have to troubleshoot that to find out what it is. Um, it's possible that some of the 2290s are bad, or the capacitor, or, or something in the circuit that is bad. Uh, it's just hard to tell, and it's real hard to work on with uh, the way this thing is set and go. This is as far as I can get the uh, cover out with it connected like it is. So I've been looking at uh, inside of this PA and man it's, it's a mess. There's uh, been a lot of resoldering going on. Uh, looks like stuff has been taken out, put in, probably someone checking or whatever. That capacitor does uh, bother me that should be across the uh, transistors um, there's no board layout view for this there's only a schematic there's one VR here up at the top there's not two normally there would be one for uh, RF power adjust to adjust it for a hundred watts or whatever you know if it's a 10 watt unit 10 watts but uh, this is probably the bias control and the reason I say that looking here at the schematic you can see Q6 and Q7 um, this comes right off of the 13.8 uh, volts on transmit and you can see it comes right on up here and goes into this tuned transformer so this right here is uh, VR01 and this is pretty much looks like the bias control. So I think what I'm going to do is probably uh, instead of trying to get all this done in one video uh, and making a video so long, I'm going to do a video, complete separate video on this uh, 100 watt PA unit and because uh, it's going to be a lot of work taking this thing out getting it out of the cap you know getting the circuit board out and go through it and uh, check in with the schematic of what's supposed to be in there what's wrong we have to pull these transistors to uh, test them or at least lift uh, some components away so we can uh, check them out real good but you know it's, it's hard to say right now if it's a um, final transistor that's bad or a driver transistor now this circuit uses a uh, 2SC 1589 as like a buffer transistor which drives two 2SC 2395s and then turn drives the 2SC 2290s so again that's going to be for one whole video and uh, it'll probably be a pretty intense one We'll get this thing out and get it set up so we can use a, uh, a generator to drive it and check. That way we can keep the wattage low and see if we can find out what's going on. So I think what we'll do now is uh, all these controls has got to be cleaned. So this front panel needs to come out and I want to uh, see what I can do about this. VFO. Um, like I said, the, the condition that it's in is just too rough and coarse to really uh, use the radio. Uh, I feel like since the radio is receiving and there is signs of transmitting that we can fix all those other problems. But this right here is what we call a deal breaker. If we can't get the VFO working right, then it's going to be kind of hard to do anything. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and remove all the knobs and pull this uh, face plate off. So guys, I was going to show this on camera, but it's kind of uh, kind of tough to uh, get down here and get this mechanism out for the VFO. But uh, there's two screws left. You know, I'm trying to take care and not break any wires or damage anything.
there is our VFO assembly or at least the uh, gear reduction so I want to get this apart so I can uh, check it out real good figure out what we got to make to put in there okay so this gear here should come off of this and it does I'll go ahead and loosen this nut okay the nuts loose we should go to screw this right off and this will slide out of here I can see there's some old Loctite on it from the factory Next thing I need to do is get these balls out. Alright, I got the balls out and just did that by just sticking a uh, screwdriver in here and pressing them and they just fall right out. Um, this collar has to come off, but this is so marred up that uh, it will not come off. So I'm going to have to take some emery cloth and clean this up. Alright, I got that cleaned up enough. To able to get this call off so now I can clean this piece up get a uh, depth of how deep that is and make a internal shaft once the shaft is made then it'll have to be grooved for these ball bearings to ride in it okay we are here at the lathe and what I got is a grade 8 quarter inch bolt about four inches long and that's what we're going to make the shaft out of. So go ahead and get this in here. Lock it down. We'll start off by facing this off. And we'll punch us a center in there. And I probably should be using my collet chuck on this. We'll go ahead and start turning it down.
Okay, so I'll hold it down, but I don't have a gauge pin this size. So I'll just get a rough point fifteen thirty five. I think it's about point fifteen thirty five. And we're at point two one seven five. So uh, we'll keep wheeling the way. close up to it. Not quite there though.
Okay, I think we got our diameter. Okay. Well, back off, tail support away. And do a trial fit. It's a little bit snug. We'll just give it a little uh, hit. We're going to give it a little hit with some emery cloth. Here's a tip for you. Whenever you're using emery cloth on a uh, something like this to polish it up, don't wrap this stuff around your fingers. Hold it like this in case it was to get caught, it'll pull out without pulling you into it. So what we need to do now is there's a spring that goes in the bottom of this. We need to put that spring in, engage it in, push it in a little bit, mark one of the holes where the ball bearing is, so we can mark the shaft on where that groove needs to be. Okay, so there's that little spring and it just slides right in here. And we can slide the shaft on. Right now, as you can see with that shaft slid on, it'll now engage back and forth. So we're going to take a sharpie, push it in all the way, release it a little bit, and we're going to make us a mark on there. And that's where our groove needs to be. Alright, we're working very close up to Chuck, so I'm going to uh, lock my carriage. I got my forming tool in there and I need to make an overhead mount to go on here to mount a camera down here so I can get a uh, better view it's going to be kind of hard for y'all to see this but you can see the forming tool I'll start by putting a little oil on there That's all we need. Alright guys, it's got a little shaft made. Just got to be cut the length after we uh, put it on and test it. Okay guys, that's the shaft we made. I'm not going to be able to zoom in, but just so close with this camera. But you can see the groove that we formed in it. And that's so that the ball bearings can ride in there. And it also prevents the shaft from coming out. So the only thing we got to do is lube this up. Put the three ball bearings in and then put the cap back on the end. And the shaft should stay in there and give us a uh, better feel at turning the VFO. Okay, we'll take some uh, assembly goo. I'm going to put a little bit on the shaft. Pop 
Pop a little bit in the holes. Hopefully that'll keep our ball bearings from falling out. Get our end cap on. All right, guys, I think we got what we wanted now. As you can see, when I turned the small shaft, the larger shaft also turns, which turns our gear on the back at a reduced rate. All right, so the next thing I got to do is get all this put back together, and I will do that off cam. Cause it's a little bit uh, tough to get in there and do this. One thing I got to do though is set the tension on this roller and we do that just by pushing these springs together. And that takes up any backlashes in that. scan TV if uh, no one's ever heard that before it's on 14.230 and what it is amateurs have equipment hooked up and they'll take a picture and they'll send this picture digitally over the air and the receiver station will download it and uh, see the picture Okay guys, so what it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be a prescaler ring attached to the larger knob that comes around here and it's got graduations around it. And then your main VFO knob will connect to the uh, smaller shaft. And as you turn this here, the graduation will turn around. It's not really, it's not numbered. I'll pop up a picture here just to show you. But uh, I think our VFO is now taken care of and it tunes real smooth now. And that was just simply by making this shaft and uh, 
cleaning up this old stuff and putting it back together. Now, I'll probably make a knob that'll go on here, probably out of aluminum. That'll give it some little bit of weight, which I'll, you know, I'll mill out the inside of it so it won't be so heavy. But uh, that'll make it spin very nice. Well, anyway, the re receiver is uh, receiving pretty good now. Uh, and I think, you know, just before, it was just so much slop and play in this VFO, it was hard to uh, get someone dialed in. It's still a little tricky, but it's a little, you know, it's a lot smoother now. So you can turn it and it's not counting numbers so quick. And it's like, you know, was turning the uh, the big knob back here. Okay guys, so we'll do uh, several videos on this thing and see if we can get this thing back up and running like it uh, did when it left the factory. And our VFO control is much better now and we'll do a tune and alignment, get the uh, receiver up and we'll pull the PA out and we'll go through that step by step. That'll be one whole video just on that because it's a simple um, power amplifier but you know there's a lot a lot goes on inside these power amplifiers so we need to find out the problem uh, I think I have some 2290s here in fact I think I have some used ones if I don't have new ones but uh, we'll get it all checked out and see just what's happening with it and we'll make several videos out of it Okay guys, we're going to put in the URL, hit paste, and we'll fill the duplicates, include replies and comments, get comments, 79 comments, we'll go down and we'll hit start. And the winner is Mark A, and the comment is, looks like a reasonable sorting station, and at and for that price so uh, Mark A you are the winner of that soldering station uh, if you'll click on the show more tab below you'll find a link to uh, my website and you can go in there and get my uh, contact information and give me a email and we'll get this thing shipped out to you so guys we always got a lot going on in here um, I've got this old Tectonics scope that uh, a viewer sent in that I've been restoring and uh, it takes a lot of time to go through something like this and this thing has a some sentimental value to them and that's why we want it restored and as you know uh, they use silver solder in these things so you just can't use uh, regular solder to go back in to uh, replace all these faulty parts I had to order some more caps uh, I mean he he sent a bag of all kinds of goodies and parts and stuff for it but uh, unfortunately there was no main power supply cap so I got them in so I'm gonna be working on this in the next couple of weeks trying to get it finished up and I think I'll do a video on the uh, alignment to this uh, piece of equipment because it's very interesting uh, solar CE capacity tester I'm working on I'm probably about halfway through the video on that as I get time uh, it's been recapped and a lot of resistors replaced the oscillator inside is not running there's very little information on the internet about this other than just the uh, schematic there's no uh, I found no tune-up or service information on it so I got to get in there and find out why the oscillator is not working so we can go ahead and get that vid video finished up I'm in the process of finishing up my uh, new isolated current limiting very act AC supply 
um, I'm just about finished with that as you can see the light bulb is inside there's a little aluminum ring here and that's the light bulb on the other side now I want to find a panel meter to go in here and I was looking at using old analog meters but uh, I'm been looking on eBay at some of those uh, cheap Chinese meters that shows uh, voltage amperage wattage power factor energy different things so I haven't made my mind up on that yet on how I'm gonna go with this I think two old school meters on here for volts and amps would look nice instead of because uh, it's kind of old school built uses two transformers as isolation a uh, Bacrana auto transformer goes from 0 to 140 volts and you got dim bulb direct your AC mains out and then your voltage control to uh, turn the variac up and down so you know a few years ago I did a video on the ICO 324 and uh, in fact it's over here on the old bench sitting right up there very nice looking unit runs real good I just don't know if I um, will do a video on this I did a little short video on uh, YouTube about different things about this thing powering up and so forth so uh, I'm not sure if I'll do a restore video on that or not you can let me know by clicking on uh, leaving a comment down below if you want to see another one get restored um, I think I'm going to do something a little different from this one I'm going to put a circuit in it to run a frequency counter and it'll probably be tube based so we'll look at that and see okay guys so that's it on this part um, like I said we're going to uh, make several videos and try to go through this thing and get it up and running like it's supposed to uh, in the meantime, I will look at what I'm going to do about making the knob. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to put a prescaler in it. I might just make a knob that just rides on this shaft out of aluminum. And um, haul it out so it won't be too heavy. But uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll look and see. Um, I don't really need a prescale on there. But uh, the radio has potential. So like I say, it's not the best looking radio in the world. See the buttons kind of yellow. But uh, other than that, I think it's be well worth uh, investing in. So uh, as always, leave your uh, comments down below. I always like to hear from you. And uh, with that, guys, we'll see you in the next video. And thanks again. And congratulations to Mark A for winning the sorting station. See you in the next one, guys. Bye.